In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our prayer on this most sacred of days. We gather on this Good Friday as a community in union with the whole Church and Christians across the world as we prepare to celebrate the Passion of our Lord. In our prayers this morning and for the rest of the day, we're also called to pray for those in our world who are still being condemned innocently through war, famine, poverty or injustice or any other form of suffering that is condemning them and taking away their dignity as sons and daughters of God. Let us pray. Lord, as we began Lent with you, you said, take up your cross and follow me. Today, give us the courage and the strength to stay with you on these of your last few remaining steps towards the cross, as we wait in joyful hope for your resurrection at Easter. Saint Eugene, the founder of the Oblates, had a profound experience of the cross on Good Friday in 1807. He was only 26 years of age. He says it was as if for the first time he noticed that Jesus was looking at him personally from the cross and loving him as he was, without reserve, without judgment. Eugene said that he had never really looked at the cross through the eyes of faith or that the cross mattered to him. It was, he says, as if he heard God saying for the first time in his life, if I am here, it is because of you, because I love you. At that very moment, Eugene experienced the tender, loving, compassionate hand of God reaching out to love him, to heal him, and to accept him just as he was. Eugene didn't experience the cross or Good Friday as something negative. On the contrary, it was at that moment that God spoke to him lovingly, tenderly, with mercy and forgiveness. And that one moment changed Eugene's life forever. He dedicated his life to becoming a missionary, proclaiming that love that he had experienced to all people, especially the poor and the most abandoned. Eugene placed the cross at the centre of his own life and at the life of all oblates. He said, it is our only distinguishing sign as oblates, and it is the centre of our prayer life and our vocation. But this applies to all of us who are trying to follow Christ today. Our oblate rule tells us that we preach Christ and him crucified. If we bear in our bodies the death of Jesus, it is with the sure hope that his life too will also be seen in our lives. Through the eyes of the crucified Saviour, we see the world which he redeemed, desiring that those in whom he continues to suffer will also experience the power of his resurrection. Today, of all days, we are asked to stand at the cross, but we're not asked to stay at the cross, which is why we pray, Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. So as we stand at the cross today with Mary Magdalene, it is with the sure hope that we will also stand with her at the empty tomb on Easter Sunday. Today, as we stand at the cross on Good Friday with each other, is only one step on our journey towards the resurrection. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Let's continue to pray with and for each other on this most sacred of days, as we also keep in our prayers those in our world and in our communities who are still suffering 
innocently that they may join their prayers with those of Jesus on this Good Friday. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we pray, loving God who renews and restores us through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, guide and protect us this day, so that by sharing in this mystery, we may also share in his resurrection. May you have a prayerful Good Friday as we wait in joyful hope to celebrate the resurrection. Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.